Hey guys, welcome to another Soul Encoded tutorial. Um, today we're going to be talking about JavaScript and it's our first video on JavaScript and I'm very excited to bring you this video because this is kind of marks the hall of uh, us getting really deep into the code base and actually writing uh, some code. You know, it's going to be challenging the next few weeks but I hope that through these tutorials you're able to hit the ground running and you know really get passionate about programming you know as much as possible. So let's talk a little bit about um, what JavaScript is. Right? So JavaScript is a very lightweight interpreted language with um, first class functions. So what is first class functions? First class functions are basically functions that, uh, in JavaScript you could pass around functions as arguments, you could have them be returned, have a function be returned. Um, so uh, you could also assign them to variables, you know, things like that. But you know, you don't have to worry too much about that right now. Um, I'll describe it more in details as the book progresses, what first class functions are. It's a very important topic. Um, also, one thing to note, as of right now, you know, 2017, I would say in web development, JavaScript is king. And what I mean by that is it's, if you really want to get into the industry, I would say the easiest path is to learn JavaScript, Node, and React, especially right now, is very hot. There's so many companies that are looking for good engineers that know that stack of technology. A little side note, there are other ways, other great ways to make um, websites. For example, Python has a great framework. Ruby, Ruby on Rails was really hot for a while. It's still pretty relevant. But yeah, there's there's a lot of different languages and tools to build websites. But for our soul encoded tutorials, we're gonna be focusing on JavaScript. Um, but yeah, so moving on, well, what is programming versus a programming language? This is a very common theme of when when it comes to uh, teaching someone how to program, right? Because a lot of people confuse that, you know, when someone first starts out, they will, a lot of people will ask other developers, hey, what's important about programming? And then everyone will say, probably, learning the concepts are much more important than learning a specific language, right? And I somewhat agree, but yeah, so basically learning the program, what are the programming concepts, right? Um, basically, a programming concept is a collection of methodologies that uh, developers have set in stone not not set in stone but kind of standardized and their conventions around and and those are kind of the key things that you need to get into your mind when you start solving these problems for example how do you manipulate data you know what are the common methodologies for sorting or traversing you know also programming structure in itself with a methodology, right? How do you loop through things? How do you, you know, do case statements, you know, check all these things is just a collection of methodologies and concepts that uh, us developers have created over time. And now they are standards. A programming language on the other hand is just a set of keywords. Simply it's a set of keywords that are mapped to a specific instruction that the computer can execute, right? So for example, um, in JavaScript, there's a var for variable, and then you could type in your uh, variable name. So in the example here, I show that is var data equals one. Um, all this does is it creates a space in memory that's called for data that it has a value one attached to it. Right. And in Python, it will look very similar, but it will be just data equals one. So these are minute differences in the programming language itself, but they do almost exactly the same thing, right? Um, and that's the difference between a concept of, in this case, assigning something to memory. That's a concept. And the language itself is just syntax. Uh, there are differences, right? So um, don't worry too much about this right now, but just so here's the one tip that you should know from this. Focus on the concepts and, and pick one language to really dive into, right? So a lot of pitfalls that new developers run into is they get very, I would say not ADD almost, but I, I kind of had this. I was 
very attracted to shiny new languages and shiny new things, right? So when Swift came out first, uh, so my journey actually to programming, I started with Java because everyone said, oh, you should know Java because Java is, you know, that's what's taught at school at the time and things like that. So I started learning Java. It was interesting. You know, I, I, I don't think it's the best first language. Uh, if I, Looking back, I would probably would I pick Python or JavaScript. But yeah, I learned Java for a little while. And then Swift came out with iOS. Uh, and I was like, oh, I want to make mobile apps. So I started learning Swift, right? And then I did that for a while and I got really interested in web. And I, I picked up web and I ended up sticking with it. So yeah, it's important to see what you would really like. But if you want to get to the next step a lot faster, like it took me three years to finally learn all of this stuff on my own and uh, also the bootcamp really expedited expedited that process but um, if you want to get there much quicker than I did then you should focus on one language deeply and you should un try to understand the concepts more because once you start picking up another language you might you know you might spend a lot of time trying to just master their syntax again um, and you'll be kind of getting frustrated like you'll start thinking oh I know how to do this like the back of my hand in JavaScript but in Swift I can't really do it without looking it up so things like that um, just look out for that right so for, if you're following along these tutorials focus on JavaScript and understand the concepts um, now going into the course material and the course structure um, the way I decided to structure this is I wanted to make it as free as possible uh, and right now it's all free uh, from my initial plan, right? And if you, ha so there's a book called Eloquent JavaScript that I used. Uh, I actually have the physical copy, but you don't need to buy the physical copy. Um, they have a free version online and I have linked it in the course materials. But if you're, if you want to support um, the author, you should definitely do that as well. Um, we'll also be using Node. Node is a, a standard, um, it's basically an engine that compiles your JavaScript. It does a bunch of other things, but basically we're going to be using Node to execute our files. And we will probably touch on NPM, which is, well, it's the Node Package Manager. Um, we'll also use Atom. Atom is uh, an IDE that I really like, and it's made by GitHub, and it's totally free. Right, and it has a really good ecosystem of developers making packages for it. So there's a lot of different IDEs, but, I recommend Adam if you're starting out. So the course structure will be basically this. We'll take one chapter of this book at a time and then I'll do a write-up of it. And then I'll, in the write-up, I'll, I'll essentially do a lecture on that chapter. We're not gonna go over every single chapter because I feel that while this book is great, there's some chapters that are just not necessary at this current level, right? Because my end goal is to get you guys to learn just enough so that you can be dangerous. And, and what I mean by that is um, you know just enough so that you can start making the computer do what you want to do. You know, you can start making websites, you can start, or I mean, you can start making, you know, like games just on the console or whatever. You could just, you could think of something and create it uh, with JavaScript, right? So. I want you to get to that level and you don't need to go through the, the entire book to do that. And I, what I really want is for you guys to find something that you're passionate about that you want to make, right? So, cause for me, I'm very, when I was learning, I had to, I had to really think about what were my drivers to learning. And my biggest driver to learning is having a very specific goal and then learning just enough to accomplish those goals. And then once I finish that, I can move on to a different goal and then learning new sets of things. But every time I did that, I was able to kind of learn a lot in the new process, store those as tools, all these little things I learned as individual tools and then reuse them. And every time I did that, I got faster and stronger at programming and building things, right? So that's what I want to do with you because in the end, if I just give you challenges and challenges and challenges, you might just get bored of doing them, right? You have to really think 
of something that would make you very happy and then go for it. Um, but yeah, so the challenge is very simple. It's basically getting your environment set up. You could go ahead and read through this, but it's you know installing the three uh, course materials uh, or downloading the book in this case, and then um, creating a hello JS, hello world JS file and then logging it and running it with Node. So it's pretty simple. Um, a, a bit of note on the additional resources. Uh, there are other great books. Uh, Kyle Simpson, Douglas Crockford are two of my favorite JavaScript authors. They have differing opinions about certain things in JavaScript, but they're both very great. Douglas Crockford, for example, he is part of the, I think TC39 they call it. It's just a community that uh, works on the next standard of JavaScript, right? So ES7 is coming out next, I believe, or ES8. No, ES7 is already, anyways. But yeah, and there's also Derek, uh, a guy named Derek, his YouTube video on JavaScript is very good. If you just want a very quick, um, one hour, one and a half hour or so of just give me everything to know about JavaScript. Um, just show me at least, not give it, just show me everything to know about JavaScript. And finally, I didn't put anything, I, I kind of discouraged the interact, interactive JavaScript learning or any, any interactive kind of programming um, tutorials. They're great, they have their purposes. You know, it's really great to get you interested in programming and get your feet wet. But at the same time, I feel like it, it does a disservice in the sense that it doesn't really show you what it, it feels like to be a programmer. You know, you don't really need to get into the console and um, the command line and, you know, move through files and, you know, you don't need to solve these problems like oh, everything's there for you. You know, you just have to type in a few things and most of the time it's just copy paste from something else. So uh, it, I don't feel that those are challenging enough for you to get interested. And the thing is, I've done a lot of those things before, especially when I was first starting out. And the main problem I had with them was... I would finish them and I would feel like I still don't know. Um, I still don't know how to program that particular language or whatever um, interactive section uh, tool that I was trying to learn, right? Um, but yeah, so like I, I encourage you to dig in. Um, really try to understand how you learn. So the reason why I, I write this up like this and I Kind of present it to you guys as the write-up is because I, I know that there's different styles of learning right some people are you know they love to read and just learn some people are audio learners some people are visual learners right and I'm just trying my best to fit your guys's needs wherever you are uh, I mean whichever style you are right so I hope that um, you find what works for you and you continue to chug along these challenges. And I hope you successfully finish this challenge. It's an easy one, so you should be able to. Let me know if you have any issues, and I hope to see you in the next video.